Our next topic is defining a nation through architecture plus design. For this session, we have invited a speaker who is known as a lead advocate for modern Filipino architecture. He is a staunch believer in the value of mixing modern and traditional elements and fusing indigenous materials with artisanal methods. Ladies and gentlemen, please all welcome the co-founder and lead architect of Buji plus Royal Architecture plus Design, Architect Royal Pineda. Good afternoon, everyone. So it's good to see you here. Uh, I, I believe some of the, the audience are actually um, uh, in the SEA Games today. Some are actually uh, volunteers. No? Um, but uh, thank you, thank you for being here because uh, today I'll just, I just want to share with you uh, an experience in, in doing what I'm doing right now, which is um, defining the nation, defining our country, defining our identity through our passion, which is architecture and design. So it's something that we feel that is, again, it's just play. I'm just having fun. But I think it's important for, for everybody to, to enjoy what you do and to be able to define something that's also very meaningful internally so that everything becomes your passion, everything becomes your roots, everything becomes your main core. No? And um, in doing and trying to do uh, this thing, definition of our nation, I have to come up with an approach. An approach that will make me achieve the vision. So, it's important for me to come up with a total design philosophy that I celebrate together with my business partner, Buji. And that is part of what I believe if you are trying to define something clear, you have to manage and orchestrate almost the totality of it. So we have to come up with total design. So we have to come up with everything. We need to bring in everything. We need to coordinate and make sure that we hold the baton in creating a vision and a sensibility. And that will never happen in defining and designing a country or a nation the process is also very important. And I, I think it, this, this applies not just in architecture and design, but this applies to almost everything. No? Um, one person cannot do something so big. So we need to have collaboration. And collaboration, we have to even define collaboration so that we'll be able to celebrate and make sure that it becomes us and it becomes what we do in achieving the definition and the, the identity of the country. No? Um, collaboration should be, again, where ego is absent, and that's the only time that ideas will be present. This is very important because if we're trying to put together something so big in defining a country, defining a nation, we need the help of everyone. We need the help of everybody. We need the help of every Filipinos, and not just Filipinos, also the foreigners. As a modern Bayanihan, collaboration is our way to make our country better. No? Um, so mo collaboration for me is the modern Bayanihan. And part of this process that I need to come up with in defining our nation I need to define who I am. So I am an, a naturalist. I'm also a modernist. So I need to do things progressively. And most importantly, I'm Filipino. And these elements of who I am is important because this will be my foundation. And defining a country is not going to be easy if I myself is confused. So I have to also come up and define my own philosophy. 25 years ago, I have to discover my own philosophy 
which is nature is peace, where everything about nature is peaceful, that even an erupting volcano is peaceful. You know? um, I will not tackle the whole philosophy that I have, but I just want to share with you, in trying to come up with something so distinct, it needs a very strong foundation. Otherwise, you will be swayed by the trends, you will be swayed by many things, you will be swayed by many styles. In the end, you are not being faithful to your authentic self. No? So, if you look at the, my next philosophy, uh, which, again, this is nature's peace. I was saying a while ago that you, I, I look at an erupting volcano and it's still peaceful. No? It's just nature doing its thing. But I have to develop a philosophy that is not in conflict with my own thinking. Because when I was 25 years ago, I was in conflict of my mind, saying man and nature being separate is constantly violating each other because there's a separation. So I, I now scrap that philosophy, I mean the concept of man and nature, and I embrace the concept of man is nature, and there is no duality, there is no separation, and it makes me do things differently. No? And I believe in the variety of the world, that the Philippines is one of the great varieties of the world. We are not here to compete, but I believe that the Filipinos all over the world, I mean the Filipinos being placed in the Philippines, the French being in France, the Italians being in Italy, there's a reason for that. And the reason for that is we need to refine ourselves as people, as nations. And once we're able to refine ourselves, that is the time that we have our gift to the world. We, as a, as a nation, as a defined nation, becomes a part of that variety of the world, and we can, we can share something. So we are not here to compete. We are here to coexist. And part of doing that is, um, again, moving forward to the architecture that I'm doing in terms of defining and making things tangible for the country, I also have to define if there's really Philippine architecture and what is modern Filipino architecture. Because we even say, and most of the Filipinos actually say, especially the architects, they say that there is no Filipino architecture, but I, I don't agree with that. No? I believe that there is Filipino architecture because the Filipino architecture, like the Bahay Kubo or the, the boat houses, were all done by non-architects. They were just done by an ordinary Filipino. Uh, they were actually uh, responding truthfully to the needs and what is given as a resources during that time, their technology, their resources. And all of the things that you're seeing are actually just manifestation of the truthful approach of that Filipino when they were doing their houses. So in the end, there's always a Filipino architecture constantly evolving as long as it's truthful and it is about the Filipino and its nature. No? So again, let's not be so conscious about the look of the Filipino architecture. It is the freedom to be able to create something that works for the Filipinos and works with the resources of the Filipinos. So these are just foundations that I needed to resolve because I cannot move forward if I have a big question in my head and I cannot even look at anybody in the eye and I cannot tell an, a, an architect, a Frenchman, and say, there's Philippine architecture. So I have celebrated that during my past years of um, do, being an architect, that Filipino architecture is about truthfulness. And now I have to move forward to modernity. So I call it modern Filipino architecture and design. Because I don't believe that the Filipinos can be just still and stagnant. I need 
to progress as a Filipino. And that's why I have to define modernity as betterment. So when I say Filipino, the old concept of saying, let's deal with Filipino time. When you talk about Filipino time, what's in our head is actually we are always late. But when we talk about modern Filipino time, modernity cannot be backwards. You cannot be, when you call yourselves modern and you'll be late, then you are not better. You need to be better. Once you declare to yourself that you are a modern Filipino, you have to be better. You have to be on time or maybe even earlier than the scheduled time. So modernity is about betterment. It's not about the look. It's not about the materials. It's not about the technology. But it's always about the betterment, no? the concept of betterment. And doing the Sea Games and the airport in Clark, being rooted as Filipino is very important. That is what we want to do and what we constantly want to execute in our project. We are trying to present to the world a very clear message and image of the Philippines. And the best way to present a status of a nation is through architecture and design. Because it's very tangible. No? When you see Naiya 1 versus Mactan Cebu that we did and then Clark, if you will see Naiya 1, you'll say, this is really a third world country. But then when you see Mactan and you see the new Clark Airport, then there's an impression right away. There's an announcement that we are moving forward as a country, as a nation. So it needs to be rooted. This is the aquatic center in um, Clark. This is uh, now being used by our athletes um, for the SEA Games. And this is now the, the athletic stadium in, uh, also in Clark. No? So it needs to be truthful. No? It needs to be truthful. If it's going to be defined as Filipino, it needs to be honest and truthful that it is Filipino. So, I needed to come up with practical luxury. The philosophy and the concept of practical luxury. Because I don't believe that the Philippines should wait to be first world to be able to experience luxury. No. I believe that today we can experience luxury by design. If we make and come up with our resources, with our humble and simple resources, and come up with great designs, we can all live in luxury as, as a country and as a nation. So, in doing this, we, have the, we are defining a city. To start def defining a country, we have to define the city. We have to define a particular image of the city. We have to define uh, the modern Philippine city, which is Clark, wherein we're able to put together the elements of it. No, it needs to be practical, uh, which is the luxury part is together, resilient, and all of these things are part of what we believe the future of our city will have to follow a certain Bible, no? so that we will have a clear um, identity. And when we were doing Clark, we were, able to, we were able to find a very major inspiration because when we were asked to design the city, we need to come up with a very majestic inspiration. Because it's so grand, that the city is so grand, we have to come up with a grand inspiration, which is nature. And what we felt, Mount Pinatubo, with its lahar that's abundant in the place, we came up with architecture that is made of lahar. So the whole city will have this architectural fiber, like the stadium, and, um, which is inspired by the crater of the Pinatubo, which is the caldera. Not, not the cauldron, not the cauldron, but the caldera. Um, this is like the paroles. No, it celebrates the, the, the silhouette. And again, the orange is actually inspired by the molten lava, which is important to be placed in this uh, stadium because we needed to put a color that also brings in adrenaline for the sports. No? 
Um, so these are just photos of the SEA Games. I think you guys are all familiar with this uh, because it's now uh, being uh, shown in most of the news with the athletes. So I won't really focus much on that. But just to show you how beautiful our, our city is and our place is in, the, in Tarlac and uh, in Pampanga, I, I believe it is important that authenticity is really kept in the process of design. And that's why even the inspiration of the baklad, which are the fish pens and the weaving of the Philippines, are all our inspiration and the, the capis windows, which is again, these are seashells as inspirations of uh, the new aquatic center. So you can see the, the light coming through from the inside to the outside, which is like the capis and the baklads, which are the fish pens, that makes this uh, architecture our own architecture, our own identity as a country, because again, it is the process that how, that's how it's done, that's how it's put together, that makes this Filipino. No? So, you'll see some of the, the images and you can see the scale of the architecture from the size of a person. This has the modern sensibility of the Filipinos today. It doesn't carry anymore the, the old Filipino sensibility of being tight, like the jeeps and tricycles, where you compromise your, pub, your, your space. It has a very grand proportion, wherein I believe that the Filipinos can have luxury of space because we already have a venue wherein Tarlac and we have all the vast lands, no? And you can see that in the, in the images that uh, will be coming later. So architecturally, again, it needs to be practical, luxury. We don't need to keep adding and putting all these uh, expensive decorative items just to say that we are living in luxury. We just have to be very honest and practical with all our elements. So our structural is our architectural. Our design is to be honest as possible with its materials, with its elements, and with its purpose. No? So here you're seeing the, the interiors of the athletics, the, the diving boards. And again, I can look anybody in the eye and say that this is a modern Filipino architecture and this is how the Philippines will be in the coming years. No? So at night, uh, during the sunrise, it becomes something else. We have places for our athletes wherein we came up with, you know, again, it doesn't have to be expensive, but it needs to be decent for the athletes where they can stay, where they can be training and having this as our main training hub for the whole country. This will be our main sports training center. And this will have a sports academies that will make and produce great athletes, great Filipino athletes. No? So these are their rooms. And uh, again, they have, that's the athletes village. They have their own park. We have our park, so this is open for the public. People can come here. And again, this is a very inclusive city. Just to show you a bit of the, the space and the development, you can see how open, no? We don't have this openness in Manila. It's about time to enjoy space, you know? The Philippines can now, and the Filipinos can now have a new concept of living where everything is walkable, every place is actually enjoyable, and you can see that it is for the people, you no? Know? It's not for the cars, it's not for the buildings, but even the buildings give way to the people. We are lifting some of the building up. We are giving spaces for people to walk under and let the building protect the people. You know? So this is all happening in Clark. So what you can see now are the athletes' village and the government uh, residences because they'll be working there and they'll be walking to that office which is five minutes away.
from the athletes' village. They just walk also to their uh, athletic center. So again, this is all happening and this is all being used in Clark right now. So the idea is we have a venue and we have now an event that's putting us under the scope and everybody is looking at the country right now. And it is a perfect time and a perfect opportunity for the Filipinos to showcase our mindset that we have a future that is modern and progressive. So just to show you also and update you that Clark will not just be uh, a city, it will definitely have its new airport with a capacity of starting with 8 million to 80 million as we progress. And we will celebrate uh, again our culture wherein you can find and you can see the village, the greeters area, the well-wishers, where we welcome and bring our families every time we send them to, to the airport. No? The airport will have a link from Manila underground coming out from the, the railway. It will be the well-wishers area, so we can, we can send our families there in the, in the park where there's restaurants and many other things. No? Um, and then you can still hang out. And this is the interiors. We are again celebrating the parole and the tropical architecture of the Philippines. Okay, so again, it needs to be distinct. No? It needs to be very, very clear that it is a celebration of us. No? And you'll notice in the roof, that is actually the the silhouette of the mountains of Sambales. No? This is actually happening because we want to echo the architecture, should echo the beauty of nature. No? So just to show you, this was taken like five months ago. Um, it's all happening. It's all being built. So this is something that we we can be proud of. The, the architecture, the height is taller than the Hong Kong airport. It's going to be grand. It's going to be very spacious. It will have the view of the Sambales Mountains and also the Arayat. What we're seeing in Clark is actually a new face of the country. This is not just a new city, but this is the new face of the country. And we would like to really make sure that we live a very, and, and we live and we create a very distinct uh, design guidelines for the city. Because again, we don't want this to be dissolved um, by uh, any other uh, design trends. No? So it needs to be authentic. We are also building the bridge that will connect the new Clark and the old Clark. So in designing this city, we have to go bigger than just designing the city. We have to define the nation. So we did our design and a vision, a master plan for the country. This was three years ago uh, when we, come up with, we came up with a design that will just give and plant seeds to the people. No? And for all of you who are here, uh, I would like to share this with you because, again, you are the next generation. And most of us who are, you know, we're all young here. Um, I would like you to see and um, have an idea. In fact, this is part of the first, uh, this is part of the flagship project that was uh, conceptualized uh, from the beginning of this administration. But again, the idea here is to make the dream um, uh, constantly available so that the next generation, the next technology, the next investments can come and develop our country together as a part of our collaboration. So, quickly I would like you to see this video. Um,
this we presented in Taipei three years ago. The three bridges is actually called Luz Biminda. The Luzon Desires Mindanao Bridge. So this is the Luz Women, the vision. This is, a, this is not my project. This is a project of every Filipino. This is our project. This is the project of our next generation. We're just putting it together. We're just presenting the vision to everyone. So, um, and right now, just to give you our um, uh, latest project, um, in trying to refine and trying to define who we are as, as a country, as a nation, I mentioned a while ago that we have to be a gift to the world. We are not here to compete. We are, in, are here to coexist with the rest of the beautiful countries around the world. But it is our moral obligation to refine ourselves, to make us better as a Filipino, so that then we can live better that's why I'm saying we can live in luxury by design today. Even at this very moment when we step out of this room, we can all in, live in luxury by design. We don't need to wait. I don't, sorry, I don't agree that I have to wait to be first world to be able to enjoy luxury. I am already enjoying luxury. With, what, with whatever I do, I design everything in my ways to make sure that it reflects and it answers my needs properly and it gives me comfort so in dubai we are now going to be presenting and i'll just show you quickly 
we are presenting and doing the Philippine Pavilion for the Dubai Expo 2020. It's going to be the biggest show on earth. It's going to be 192 countries. And this will be an, an opportunity for us to present to the world what we are and who we are as a modern Filipino. I'll just show you quickly the videos. Um, and this is Bangkota. Uh, we call it Bangkota because this is the ancient Tagalog word for coral reef. That means to say because uh, the Philippines is actually the center of the center of the marine biodiversity of the world. We own this. We are the only center of marine biodiversity. So we are like coral reefs. We are small, but we are all over the world. You know? And that's why the architecture shows, and this will be shown in this video, will show you that in representing and presenting our architecture, it doesn't need to be Baha'i Kubo. It doesn't need to be Baha'i Kubo. It doesn't need to be ethnic. It needs to be an inspiration from nature no? because even on this day um, what we are trying to do in the event in the actual event it will be there will be a day a national day which is March 16 2021 we are using that day as a national day for the Philippines and we are declaring the 500 years of Magellan's arrival to be day one. Day one because that will be the day that we will reset the minds of the Filipinos that our history is not limited to the time of the 500 years where the Spanish arrived. We as Filipinos, our history goes back farther than 500 years. We are people of innovation since 5,000, 6,000, 7,000 years ago. No? We are a people of creativity and that is the freedom that Bangkota will represent in the Dubai Expo. We will claim our freedom in terms of mindset, in terms of thinking that we are always been great people and not because we were discovered in fact we discovered Magellan no? he did not discover us thank you so much so this is Pankota and again uh, thank you for listening I just hope that through architecture and design we are not politicians but we believe, and I believe, that every Filipinos can have their ways and you can have your means to celebrate who we are as people. Because in the end, it is our identity, it is our own future that we have to take and be in charge of. We can open ourselves to the foreigners. We can open ourselves to uh, uh, specialists and experts of their field in the global arena. But I believe that we are still the people who are in charge of our destiny as a country. So we can build a new city with the great consultants from all over the world. But in the end, only a Filipino can create what is Filipino. So thank you so much.